Hi! Long time no see. It's been way too long since my last upload and I have no excuse at all. I just haven't really known what to film, I think. So it's like a lack of motivation and procrastination, but also just not knowing what content to put out there. So I'm sorry. But also, if you have any suggestions for videos, let me know. I know that a lot of you really like my recommendation videos, mainly my romance ones. Sadly, those do take quite some time, so I always want to do them, but they just, they take a while because I, not every book that I read, I want to recommend, you know? I'm sorry, my nose is so itchy right now. <sighs> Hopefully I'm not just rubbing at my nose this entire time. Okay, so just look, look. recommendation videos are coming your way. I just want to make sure that the books that I tell you guys to invest your time in to and pick up, spend your money on, you know, whatever, I want them to be books that I really actually enjoyed myself. And I don't feel that way about all the books that I read. <laughs> Although, oh my God, the number of romance books that I have read this year is insane. It's crazy. So a video of romance recommendations will be coming very soon. Also, quick note, I'm very sorry if you hear noise in the background. I'm doing my laundry right now and the washer dryer is like right outside my room. I'm gonna try to throw some music on over it to dim that sound, but if you can still hear it, I'm sorry. Okay, so intro done. Let's get on to the meat of the video, which is talking about my recent reads. I used to do wrap-ups on a monthly basis, but I have not done one since February, I think, which is alarming. So I want to talk about some of the books that I have read since February. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'm definitely going to share my thoughts and feelings about some of them. I think I'm gonna talk about six, and some of them are series, but I'm counting them as one, so yeah, okay. All right, back to itching my nose. Oh my god. The books that I've read recently. Let's begin. So the first book that I want to talk to you all about is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I really liked it. Lainey Taylor's writing is gorgeous. We all know this, you know? But I don't know if I want to continue on with the series right now. I know people love Daughter, this Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> and it's totally like a personal thing. Like there was nothing wrong with the story. I just, uh, I don't know. I have so many other books that I want to read and I don't know if I want to invest the time into continuing on with that series. But if you have thoughts about that, let me know. If it's like your favorite series ever, I should probably continue on with the trilogy. But if the majority of you are like, well, yeah, yeah, it was good for like 2013, but now when did it come out? Also, I don't mean like good for 2013, but just if you're like, yeah, that, that could, you can move on to her more, her latest works. like. Strange the Dreamer, which I still have not read. <laughs> my TBR just stresses me out so much. But uh, yeah, that's most of my thoughts on uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I liked it. I didn't love it to the extent that I know some people do. But I, I think it's a I think it's a personal thing. Like I really don't think it had anything to do with the book. I think I just like wasn't in the right state of mind while I was reading it to like immerse myself and the type of world that I, yeah, I don't know. All right, let's the next books. <laughs> so uh, these next books, I want to talk to you about a series, and that is Curse of the Gods by Jane Washington and Jane and Eve. This series is a reverse harem, and I really liked it, but it is a very fluffy, light series. The narrator, Willa, she's very conversational. So if you if you don't like that type of prose, I would stay away from this. But if you like, sort of like Meg Cabot-esque, just for like a comparison, it's, it's kind of, you know, in that vein. The series that was really fun. I really, I never read a reverse harem before, and I found that I really enjoy them. This one though, it doesn't really like pick up in the steam level until I think it's like the third book? Might be the second book. Second or the third book. The first one is relatively low on the sexy times. Is there even kisses in the first one? I don't remember. You might recall in my 
June TBR, which I didn't stick to and like what I'm currently reading, I mentioned this series and that I paid for Kindle Unlimited specifically so I could read this series because I thought that I would like fly through it in a month and it'd be like, oh, it's $10 and I read all these books, but it ended up taking me uh, a lot longer than that. And I was just paying for Kindle Unlimited without even reading the books for like three months. So that was a bit of a bummer because I went through like a reading slump and you know, with the move, there's a lot going on. So, but anyway, it was definitely a very fun, fluffy series. Definitely had some funny times in it, but also some silly times. I don't know. <laughs> if you're in the mood for a very light fantasy with a lot of men, and one lady, check it out, because <laughs> I think you might like it. Let's move on, shall we? So the next book that I wanna talk to you all about is Best Day Ever by Kara Ruda. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, but I'm taking a shot at it. This book actually my mom recommended to me, and it's very interesting. I really liked it. It's kind of a mystery, but not really. Kind of a thriller, but not really. It's just, it's different than anything I've read before. And maybe it's because I don't read a lot of like thriller mystery type books, but I really, really liked it. And I feel like I can't talk a lot about it without spoiling things, but it definitely, it keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't quite know who to trust, essentially. It's told from, it's basically a husband and a wife and they're going on like a weekend getaway. And it's told from his point of view. And it's tough to tell whether or not he's an unreliable narrator or if his wife has like stuff going on. It's, it's just like, it's a mind game. But when you figure out what's happening, it's so good. And I honestly, like I laughed because some of the things that certain people were saying we're just like oh my god like you are removed from reality it was really good and i would definitely recommend it if you are in the mood for huh? is it a psychological thriller i mean maybe i mean it's there it's a really cool like character study almost like i don't know <laughs> I really liked it. So the next books that I want to talk to you about, I've already talked about in my um, uh, my last video, which was over a month ago, and that was my mid-year book freakout tag, and that is The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. I just loved these books so much, and I want to talk more about them right now. So I love when a character goes like dark without any like guilt really like i love when someone not not in real life but like in fiction when someone can kill people and like not be like torn up with guilt over it and just be like hey oh, that's done on to the next thing so i love jude i love jude and i know some people like really don't like her because they they don't feel the same way that i do about those things i think and also maybe just they don't find her interesting i find her incredibly interesting and i'm in love with her <laughs> also Cardin. I can't get enough of him. I was watching some of Holly Black's interviews and she's talked about their relationship before of kind of like, Jude has this idea of how horrible Cardin is, but then like once her and Cardin like come together, Cardin's like, oh, hold on. Like I was kind of all talk and like, you're really doing terrible things. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know, she explains it a lot better, but I just, I love that how like, Cardin puts up the front that he's like this terrible, cruel prince or whatever, but Jude can actually be horrible. Whereas Cardin's just kind of like a bully and Jude is like a manipulative murderer, which I love. <laughs> oh my God. I just, I love these books and that ending of The Wicked King. I cannot wait for The Queen of Nothing. I can't wait for it. I, I have goosebumps. I'm so excited about it. I love Holly Black. I've mentioned it many times. I know that I already talked about this in my mid-year book freakout tag, how I love the coolest girl in Cold Town. And I was kind of talking about this a little bit in my freakout tag, how I feel like Holly Black is really good at complex characters that kind of balance that line of morality. And like, I love Tana in The Coldest Girl in Cold Town because she's like a normal girl but she also has this like ferocity inside her. I just, I love Holly Black. I love how Holly Black deals with 
characters. I just, I... I love it. I think that's obvious. I'm gonna stop talking about it. Let's move on. So, whew, I gotta calm down. The next book that I want to talk to you about is The Magpie Lord by K.J. Charles, I think. Why did I get out of my Goodreads? It's never a good idea. Yes, KJ Charles, which is the first book in A Charm of Magpies. Oh, this little puppy. I am uh, conflicted on because I think I, I think I really enjoy the story, but the narrator of the audiobook, I listened to this, wasn't my fave. Like he was a very good actor, but this, this book has some very steamy times in it and I didn't find his voice sexy in that regard. I kind of felt uncomfortable listening to it. Like Teddy Hamilton, Zachary Weber. I think I also like Jason Clark. There's other ones I can't remember. Those narrators, like, I find their voices like sexy. Versus this was very much like a posh English gentleman. And so for really intense sex scenes, it just felt like a little, not sterile. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't love it. So that in turn then made me feel weird about the sex scenes in general, which I don't think I would have if I was reading the book. And obviously like, if you're reading a book that has some romance in it and you're, you're not, you like the steamy side of things, like that's part of why you're enjoying the book. It's for like the romance and the sex. And if that, feels weird. I, <laughs> I'm not explaining this in a, in a great way. <laughs> Narrator aside, I did enjoy this book and I will say if you are someone who likes romance in your books but you don't like the romance to be the central plot, you might really enjoy these books. It's essentially like a, a fantastical, historical mystery romance and I find the plot very intriguing. I will say though, um, although this had lighter moment, mo moments, moments, a lot of the stuff that happens is pretty dark. Um, like there's one scene in particular near the end where things are pretty gory and um, I'll also say like animals die in a terrible way. I didn't like <laughs> reading about that. That was terrible. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not, you're like, oh, they're in love, this is so fun. It's got more grit to it than that. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. So yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't, know. I don't really know how I feel about it. I think I want to continue on with the series, but just do it myself reading it and not with the audiobook. All right, and finally, the last book that I want to talk to you all about is one that I did read very recently. Um, and that is One More Time by Laurelyn Page. This is a book that I think I ruined for myself because <laughs> I was kind of like in an anxiety mode about just finishing books. And so I listened to this on like two times speed for like half the book, which just like hindered my enjoyment of it because obviously it felt very rushed. So I don't feel comfortable giving like an actual I guess opinion on this book. So I don't really know why I'm talking about it, but I just wanted to share that I read it. I did like the narrators for the audiobook. Um, one of the characters is an Australian man. So that was fun listening to the actor who did his voice. I don't read a lot of books that have accents other than like American and English. So when, you know, you throw in like a Scottish accent or an Australian accent or a French accent. I haven't read any book where there's a French accent, but you get what I mean. It's just, it's different and it's fun. So maybe give it a go if you wanna read a fun romance. This is about two actors and they're making a movie and it's like second chance at love. It's cute, but I would, yeah, just don't listen to it on two times speed because you will regret it. That's that. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Again, I'm so sorry that I was gone for way too long. Um, I really wanna get back in the swing of filming. I just, I need ideas. <laughs> I can't remember what I've already said. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you very soon in another video. Again, why can't I speak today? Just difficult. The brain and the mouth are just separate right now. Have you guys ever seen Victoria Schwab speak? She's just so articulate and so the opposite of me. I strive to speak like her. I don't know where I'm, why I'm bringing this up, 
but just a little fun fact about me. I hate the way I talk. Okay, well, on that positive note, I will see you all in a video soon. Bye!